I want to share with I want to share with you something I've just now learned, which is that if you open a beer and you get the beer on your hands and then you touch the mask, your mask will smell like beer <laughs> for a long time. Just saying. Yeah, what's the what's the problem? Okay, so we're going to start off the closing ceremonies and uh this is way more people than I thought was going to stick around this long. So give yourself yeah. I've also discovered that this podium has no place for me to put the beer down. With that <laughs> I love you guys. I really love you guys. Okay, so we're going to kick this off. <laughs> we'll just set the stage. So, um welcome to the closing ceremonies. You cannot stop the signal. <laughs> <clears throat> but unfortunately, um, sometimes nature does it for you. And um, so I just want to continue a tradition where right at the start, um, we get uh, quiet for a minute. We think about those uh, giants who came before us, whose shoulders we're standing on, who inspired us or, or taught us, and, um, or maybe uh, people in your own life uh, or family who are no longer with us. Let's just think about them for a little bit and all the fun times and, and all the inspirational things um, that, they, that they brought to your life. All right. All right. Fantastic. Let us talk about what just happened, what we all just did together. So this is the in-person portion of a hybrid conference, something we have never, ever ever done and something I don't want to do <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. we, we did this because we had to, not because we wanted to. Um, and I think it's because it's like two and a half conferences of planning. It's really super stressful on everybody, on, on the goons, on you, on the people putting together the contests and the events. And, um, and we tried to do it in the safest possible way we knew how and we stuck with our messaging the whole time and didn't, didn't change every time the CDC changed their mind about masks or something. And, um, and so now we're at the end of it. I feel super proud of us all. It's sort of like we did it. Uh, so there is the in-person, then we have the virtual, and then we had all the social in between. Uh, and so hopefully, if this is working, the closing ceremonies are also going out uh, to all the virtual Discord users. So if you're watching this at home on Discord, awesome. Thank you for making the virtual possible. Um, what's that? Line con forever. Right. You cannot escape line con virtual or in-person. It will, if we are super efficient, we'll just artificially slow things down to force line con. <laughs> we, um, we uploaded, like last year, we uploaded all the videos of all the talks we could get our hands on. And, uh, and you can see we had, what, 11,100 hours of watch time, but more than 28,000 viewers of what we had on YouTube. That's as of maybe two hours ago or so. So those numbers will probably climb. And as we get all the videos from all the villages, um, we'll be starting to post them. So over the next couple of weeks, you'll see this barrage of announcements saying, we now have the IoT Village videos up. We now have the Blue Team Village videos up. And you'll just start seeing them all, all accumulate. Um, <clears throat> another thing which was a first for us was pre-registration. <laughs> and raise your hand if you absolutely hate pre-registration. Yeah. I, I, less, less than I thought, right? 
How many people actually love pre-registration? So we, we were dealing with two to three hundred emails a day. That is not fun. Not fun at all. Um, we had no other way to judge how many people were showing up. How are we going to be in two hotels, one hotel, five hotels? So thanks for, for bearing with us because we could not figure out any other way to judge interest. And I think we started trying to terrify everybody <laughs> as we'd run out of badges and then we'd get some more. That, um, and then we tried to tell everybody, hey, if you show up in person, you might not just get a, there might not be a badge for you. And because of all that, we actually ended up with enough badges. So, and so only three or four hundred people showed up on site um, trying to buy with cash, which was like, what, a couple percent? So that was great. Um, so that's why we had enough. We had enough ready, and so now we have too many badges. You know, there's, there's always a problem. Um, so we're selling what we can over at registration, and uh, and the rest will end up selling online. But really, we were really close. We were only so those of you wondering, um, we had about eighty six or eighty seven hundred humans, about nine thousand, a little less than nine thousand. <laughs> yeah. And if you figure, if you figure what's our like protocol overhead, we have about a thousand staff, village, contest, press. All the people that aren't humans are about a thousand. So for about every one, one out of ten of you, there's somebody helping build or create the content, and then there's nine people participating. And, uh, and so it worked out really well. We were, after a year like last year, we could not survive another year without actual people being around us. And so how many people here just felt like it really recharged your batteries? Yeah. Yeah. It was the, uh, it was the, it was the first time since February 2019, I think, uh, 2020, that I flew. Like a year and a half. I've been hiding in one country for <laughs> that long. And it was really culture shock to come back to the States from Singapore and, uh, it's like, oh, this is the correct side of the road to drive on, you know. <laughs> this is what pizza tastes like again. <laughs> um, so we really don't want to do pre-registration again because it's such a pain uh, and we really don't want to have to do a hybrid event unless we absolutely, absolutely have to. Um, so we're hoping everybody behaves and we can get to an all 100% uh, event next year. Now let's talk a little bit about what you've got hanging around your necks. Um, as you know, we had a call for badge designers and it was uh, very exciting and in the end, MK Factor uh, won. Uh, they wowed us with their technical specs, their connections to the community, their thought process, the problem solving and all of that. And what was really important is when I would float a crazy idea, they would say, I don't think we can do that. And so they could say no to power, right? They could tell me, not possible. It's like awesome. I need to know what my boundaries are, and uh, and so that was really that was really refreshing working with them. So here's a slide on on the badge, and up here you see these are the Uber badges, black badges that are going to go to contest winners. Um, they look different, but they present as Goom. So if you plug into them, you don't get Uber. The only way you get Uber is you have to hack your own badge to say Uber. Right. So that's on you. Right. <laughs> that was a pretty cool, pretty cool maneuver there. So let's let's have uh, MK Factor stand up. Where are you guys? You're hiding somewhere. MK. Where did they go? Oh, oh, right over there. MK. And it was, a, it was really difficult because I'd say, well, we don't know if we're hybrid, we don't know if we're in person, so we should probably do both. Um, well, we need it to work online with Discord and, uh, and we probably need the battery to last and not electrocute people if they get pushed in a pool because there might be a pool. And it needs to, you know, you just start stacking on these requirements and, um, and then this Chinese supply chain started getting more and more sketchy. And, and if you saw the opening remarks, you know, they tell this crazy story about going through four different uh, chipsets before they landed on the, 
on the one we used. So big kudos for crazy adaptability and adverse conditions. So um, if they're up for it and they want to torture themselves again, um, as the badge designers with a positive community feedback, they're invited back next year to design again. But, uh, but this year they don't have four months to do it in. I, they get all the months of the year. <laughs> um, okay, so this is something we started years ago, uh, our transparency report. And it stalled last year because it was very hard to do transparency um, on a virtual event. Um, we tried, but the, the way that we gathered statistics and everything, it just didn't really make sense. So we're back to doing the all traditionale uh, transparency report. And for some of this information, uh, we're going to have CJ, head of our SOC team, talk about the transparency numbers. First of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, it's been one of the most mellow DEF CONs I've been at. It was certainly, given that my team was 34 people and in a normal year it's about 200. So we were spread really thin. So we were spread really thin and we relied on you guys and, and gals and other members of the community to help us. And you did a great job. Right. My voice is going. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, but it was probably one of the best years in terms of how mellow and how safe it was. <laughs> so, let's see, I can't actually read this. So the virtual stats, um, we had 95,562 plus messages and the moderation team only had to remove 127, which is 0.13%. Considering that's online, that's pretty phenomenal, you know? <laughs> we received 30 reports through the reporter violation function that got put up. And across the 34,321 plus accounts on the Discord, that's all we had. We gave a total of 45 users warnings, temporarily muted 50 users, kicked seven users, and banned six users. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty impressive though. <laughs> so now onto the physical side of things, which is uh, where it gets a little bit more interesting. Um, we had seven medical emergencies that where EMTs are involved. Like, those of you who have been at DEF CON for a while know that is a really low number. Considering how much I saw people tying it on, uh, everyone was in sort of like little clusters distributed rather than being in lots of big gatherings. But people were really tying it on. Um, at, but they were doing so so responsibly that we didn't actually end up with the emergency calls we normally have. That is also really, really great. It shows a, a huge amount of responsibility on part of everyone here. Probably the toughest thing was it was really clear just how much people were struggling. We could see cracks everywhere. People were struggling to deal with social situations. People didn't know how to interact with other people as well as they used to. And so we had quite a few uh, mental health issues that we had to support. Um, and we had quite a lot of attendees seeking support. And given that we didn't have our usual helpline, that was hard to cope with. But it was a pleasure to do because it was nice to see people come forward, being open about this stuff and, and supporting it. And the community, again, was by and large awesome in supporting their run. And I want to say, please keep that up. Keep an eye on your brothers and sisters. Keep an eye on everyone else in the community, no matter what race, color, gender they are. Support them. And if you see red flags, you don't have to deal with it yourself, but call someone else and get someone involved. Just don't ignore it. Yeah. 
For the first time this year, uh, we distributed feminine hygiene products to make sure that they were available. Um, and because we've got to get used to talking about this stuff, here are some statistics for you. 1,224 items distributed. That was 800 tampons, 295 pads, and 128 liners. It shows the need, and it shows that we were there to service it. We also put these in bathrooms irrespective of gender. So everyone had access. Now onto the policy and conduct, which is, you know, the people who don't want to comply or who have difficulty with structure. Um, we had one lost passport. We had three photo violations. Uh, I wonder if that was low because we also had a significantly low number of press, both amateur and registered. Uh, we had three suspicious packages, and I learned a novel approach for removing a suspicious package. The... Uh, Organization in question looked at the package, ran in, grabbed the package, and ran out again. <laughs> it wasn't a bomb. Uh, we had two people removed for not masking. Approximately 25 people who were turned away because they didn't have the appropriate vaccination status. And well, hey, hold on. Some of these folks either didn't have the right information because they hadn't been given it, or some of them uh, had been given incomplete information. Some of them came from different countries, and so they didn't have information that we could pass. There was one guy who did say, what vaccine? <laughs> Screw that guy. And we only had two who had to be removed from the vaccine line because they were a problem. By and large, that's pretty impressive. There's a couple of other things that aren't on this slide that need to be called out. We had one chandelier shattered by a DJ who dropped the bass so hard, it blew the ceiling out. Jackalope, you are a legend. And we had one goon who had to be requested to be muted, muted on Discord because they couldn't stop helping people. <laughs> right. Thank you. I hope to see you all in person next year. <laughs> All right, so a large part of the, uh, the virtual on Discord um, is managed, maintained, built by the DevOps crew. And representing DevOps is Riverside, who's going to talk about a little bit about what happened. And uh, come on up, come on up, man. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Uh, so this year was another year of a ton of work. Um, I don't know if we're going to throw the slides up. There we go. Um, throw this down there. So the, the team up there did an amazing job. We took all the lessons learned that we had from the after action last year and rolled them into things. I mean, people were complaining about the infinite list of channels on the left, so we built a menu system. We did a bunch of things. Um, as the DevOps team worked their butt off on code and doing things, then, uh, you know, I work back at Hacking Village as well, so they were like, hey, we'll help. So they were the test um, and guinea pigs for that, so they definitely deserve a hand as well. And then the Discord team. So thank you all. Um, this, this took a ton. They, they did an amazing job. Um, 
All right, so we, we threw these slides up last year, just some stats so that you can see where people are coming from and kind of see around the world who, who and where and what. Um, they'll be in the deck so you can get them later. I want to kind of go through the, the rest of the stuff. So we set this up in a really formal way. We have a request bot and a Kanban board with stuff to go through so that all the departments can submit things. We processed 109 requests from the departments. Um, the, we now have 31 bots. 176 microbots and 16 Easter eggs. <laughs> and uh, we're now up to over 15,000 lines of custom code for all of you. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, so last year we, we threw up a, a bot and a component that would automatically take all your lovely files and send them off to VirusTotal. And I don't know why, but you just don't like giving away your malware to VirusTotal. Like, those, the O days just stopped. <laughs> so we worked with Discord, and they were like, yeah, that's a good idea. And their tools are kicking ass. So we had zero detected by our, our process because they're doing all of it on the front end. So the collaboration between DEF CON and Discord really worked out well on that. Um, we added three new bots. So we had uh, the Human Plus bot, which was helping process all the codes for the, the badges, and Seastone uh, led that, and it was amazing. Um, the Info Booth bot, which I'll talk a, lot, a little bit about it later, but um, Ari and those, team, uh, those folks helped work that together. Um, and that is actually an AI bot, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And then the, the line bot, the Ares line bot, which was a, a village line bot, and uh, the DevOps team spent a lot of time doing code review on, for that before it went in and going through all the process. And then there's the, the amount of people that use the menu system down there. Um, certainly had some, you know, little shenanigans over there to the side I showed you. And then here's some more stats. The Human Plus, Inhuman Reg. We now have over 34,000 people on the Discord server. So they keep increasing. It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, how many of you use the Discord server I raise a hand just during con, wandering around, doing things. All right. How many of you felt it was a good way to communicate with people while at con? Wow. All right. Um, the info bot uh, start that we put up started processing queries, so the info team and all the other teams were really small. We all had staff issues. And so last minute they're like, why don't we write an AI bot that will try to answer the questions and do the things, and then if it doesn't know what to do, it'll call a goon. So that worked out really well, um, m mostly, uh, I'll tell you. <laughs> so the, uh, the mostly is that um, Copman asked the bot, uh, a question and the bot actually said it was a fed. <laughs> so the DEF CON AI bot apparently is a fed now. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yes, you just asked the info boot bot a question and there, there it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, a couple users decided to try to pen test the bots uh, without talking to us, but that's fine. It worked out. They uh, we, we we they got their their nice rubber stamp, um, and and that was fun. And then there were users posing and timing messages to look like error messages and do other things inside of there just for fun. The the trolls were real. It was a good time, but uh, that that was the majority of that. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't. So um, in in. Uh, the spirit of, of you know shenanigans and, and being silly at con and having a good time. I mean, you, you heard uh, CJ talk about random miscellaneous devices and you know that whole thing. So, um, in the the many hours of working on this and trying to do this stuff, uh, sometimes you get a little insomnia. So I finish coding, working on a thing, doing the day job, doing all that, and I'm like, all right, time to go to bed. And then you know, two hours later you're still not going to sleep. So I was like, oh, well, I have this idea. I think I'm going to make this thing. And so this random, not a bomb looking thing um, <laughs> with a nice, you know, sealed, uh, yeah. And uh, what, what I did was I built a little PIR sensor, motion sensor, and a timer. 
And we put this in some various places, maybe some bathrooms, facing urinals, maybe some other places, and then it would wait 90 seconds to make sure, you know, flow and other things were going if that was a thing. We've been trying to reach you concerning your car's extended warranty. You should have been something in the mail about your car's extended warranty. Since we have not gotten a response, we are giving you a final courtesy call. Anyway. <laughs> have a good one, everyone. All right, so keeping the packets flowing is the knock led by Effen. And with less attendees, you would expect less traffic, but he will tell you the mysteries of the network. So, thank you. Knock, Effen. Hello, DEFCON. It's good to be back. So let's do the knock review. I'll do this as fast as I can. It worked. So if you have seen this presentation before, this is a recycled slide. We do like Nicolas Cage and Guy Fieri in the knock. They're inspirational. But this year was a little different, as everybody knows, right? But we did what very similar to what we've done in the past. So we showed up, a few of us showed up on Saturday, last Saturday. And we were here, hit the ground on Sunday, and I'm not going to walk you through all this. You can download this presentation later from knock.dafcon.org. Uh, but everything, for the most part, worked, and we have the issues, uh, the slide coming up. And we're here, and we're going to, like, the team is working. They're tearing down some stuff already, and tomorrow and or Tuesday, we're going home. Uh, this is a nice picture of the NOC network. Uh, we have two core switches, one at Bally's, one at Paris. And a bunch, we, we use less equipment than less time for obvious reasons. And people always ask what we have for the gear. Um, we have it there. Interesting part in this slide is that we had last time about 80 something access points, if I'm not mistaken. And we use more, more than half of that here this year, which is good, good coverage. Uh, make sure you have the Wi Fi's and the internets. As DT was mentioning, we do, even though there was way, like a third of the people or so here, or a quarter of the people here compared to last time, we pushed more than half of the of traffic so that means you use more of the internet here so which is really good keep that going on the wi-fi graphs uh the interesting thing on this slide other than the normal pattern that people actually leave the conference center and go to sleep and come back next day and use a little bit more and then on sunday things go start going down uh, a quarter of you still use the open network that's really interesting um, <laughs> Maybe you're trying to just play well with others. That's fine. That's why it's there. Um, this is kind of a new slide, is the different applications and destinations that people use the most. It's really good that HTTPS has been used widely. Uh, that's good. Uh, the media server, as you can see, was really well utilized there as well. And speaker ops, is our top users or the top user on the wireless. This is all about wireless. So next year everybody should have the same username and we have just one name there. <laughs> so speaking of the challenges, which is the, the one of the things that we like to share, right? We all make mistakes and we make a lot of them. We just try to fix them as soon as we we're told that we messed up. Uh, we have one, we had one switch here in the contest area that was acting funny uh, on Friday. Apologies to some of the contests and the Wi-Fi users, uh, but the, the team worked out and uh, we we fixed the optics on the on the switch. And then after that was fixed, somebody somehow uh, we lost power in that IDF, and not only us but the hotel as well. So if you did that, please don't do that again. Um, yeah. 
And we also had a couple issues with the radio server on Wednesday morning, uh, but that went away. Uh, it caused some, some hiccups with the registration, but we worked through that at 7 a.m. Um, and one of the things that we should have done a better job was to test all the platforms that we list on a Wi-Fi reg. Apologies to the Linux users. And uh, yeah, if we go back to, actually, if you go back here, you're going to see that we spent quite a few days tweaking Wi-Fi Reg for Linux. So we're, we promise we're going to do a better job next year. And we also get some last minute requests. I really appreciate all the, the leads, the, the different leads for the different teams for being nice to us. And uh, this was, I think, we really had the fewer requests that we ever had. And no, the fiber that was cut was not in Las Vegas. Uh, people were showing up in the north saying, hey, DEFCON.org is down. We're like, we know it's not us, right? That was somewhere else. These are our internal clients. The difference from this slide is that we provided the wire internet to one village and one contest. Um, everything else played well on wireless, so uh, that's good. These are the numbers. So almost seven terabytes of data went through compared to 12 and a half uh, two years ago. So that means you push more data with less people. So hence to you. This is the NOC team. Really, I want to thank the NOC team for doing what they do. Not all of them were able to be here with us. Whoever, whomever was not here, they actually worked remotely and it worked out okay. Uh, but probably they were not hungover, which <laughs> they worked more, I guess. So if you want uh, the information that used to be on defconnetworking.org, that's no longer our website. Uh, you go to knock.defcon.org. And I want to thank everybody that is listed there, especially Janet, she did a phenomenal job uh, helping us work with the, the hotel this year, so thank you. And also a special thanks to Miles, who's listed here as Mills, uh, that's his nick. He's not a goon, uh, but he wanted really to help. He flew down to Vegas Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, not a goon, just wanted to help and flew back home because he had family stuff to do. So Miles, thank you. With that, see you next year, and again, it's good to be back. Continuing the theme of networking, we're going to move on to DCTV. How many people, by show of hands, watched DCTV in their hotel room? That is thanks to Video Man and his intrepid crew. Hello, we're DCTV, Morgan. I'm Video Man. So this year we had a, a new hybrid model to work with. And so while we've done hotel televisions uh, in the past, uh, this year we added full online streaming of all of the tracks plus additional content. So Twitch, that was new and managing that. The other thing is that we're usually dealing with a live feed provided by uh, a source of knowledge. And this year we had to kind of balance this between live feeds as well as pre-recorded talks and trying to schedule those and make sure time slots uh, uh, fall in line. Uh, and then we also added events and villages, which are things that we have not actually handled in the past. So we had a lot of new things. We did stream to uh, seven of the uh, Caesars properties listed here. And we managed six channels on Twitch. Uh, one of the things that was new for us was actually being able to schedule the talks in the, in the past. We rely on SOK Media to send us a stream, and then we rebroadcast that out to the seven properties essentially. But this year we had to go through and actually get the talks and then pad those talks so that they would then start at the right time. Um, we had an excellent crew that helped out to make that happen. It was actually really nice. 
Some of the other challenges were um, varying video sources, some live, different encoders, different file formats that people provided us, different audio levels on all of these different files. And so it was a lot of kind of, you know, there was a bit of last minute tweaking. And, you know, we borked a few things. Um, we're sorry. <laughs> we're human. We, we're human. We had two talks that we had to replay, but it was fine. I tried my best. We love you. Yes. <laughs> so for content, we had tracks one through three through the entire conference. Uh, that was a mix of live and pre-recorded. Um, as I mentioned, one of the new things we got to provide was villages this year. And so villages provided pre-recorded content, and so we got the uh, adversary village, the blacks and cyber security, uh, hardware hacking village, payment village, and IoT village. Uh, both nights of Hacker Jeopardy, that was fantastic. Uh, that that was a that was a pleasure. Um, we had a documentary channel, uh, and then we had a Dan Kaminsky channel. These are our numbers. <laughs> there was a lot. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that we had 8,000 unique viewers on Twitch that came in. So that's more than half the con. And a total of 31,000 hours uh, streamed on Twitch, in addition to the YouTube hours. And I mean, sort of the way that we do this is we have VPN tunnels that are separate from the DEF CON network because our video tends to kill their network, or at least it did in the past. So all of the data that you're seeing here is just our data going out, which is pretty neat. So, yeah, 63 unique tracks, 53 village talks, 13 documentaries, 372 hours, and 89 hours of Dan Kaminsky. <laughs> And I don't believe the crew is here. They're actually back monitoring the feed up to the internet, making sure everything's working, making sure everything's going. But I want to thank our entire team. They did a fantastic job. Uh, one of them being remote from the Netherlands. So yes, we have Sandwich, Ghost Pepper, Robin BS, Squeak, Ghost in the Fiber, aka Eagle One, in the corner there in the Netherlands. Um, and Tuna, myself, Video man. Video man. We couldn't do this on our own, and we'd like to give special shout outs to uh, several teams uh, that all made this possible for us to do. QM, without them, we wouldn't have the stuff. <laughs> Knock, without them, we wouldn't have the fiber to be able to do the streaming. SOK Media, without them, we wouldn't have the TV content for track one. Uh, Defcon Ops, right, who coordinated all the channels and the hotels and everything, got that going. Caesars IT and their staff, right, without their IT we wouldn't be able to deploy our decoders in their TV head ends. Sonify that put the stuff back onto the TV head ends in the hotels. And Partial Foods. To keep us partially fed. <laughs> and of course, all of you, both those of you who are here and those who are remote. The, the 8,000. Thank you. All right, I'd like to bring up the info booth. You have many questions. That's right, you have many questions and sometimes we actually have the correct answers, sometimes we don't. We just go with what the information we're given at the time. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the whole info team, both on-site and remote. Uh, have we had, what, about 30, 35 people total? Um, and then I want to thank DT for, you know, hosting this event and Nikita with your support and Janet and Wendy, uh, without you guys we wouldn't be here to make this happen so we really appreciate you guys. So, um, ways to get a hold of our team are info.defcon.org, 
our Discord is the InfoBooth uh, text channel. You can always reach us on Twitter. And then we run the Hacker Tracker app, the official app of DEF CON that comes, uh, that's part of InfoBooth. So. <laughs> So how many of you actually downloaded and use Hacker Tracker on a regular basis? Awesome. Yeah, that's great. So if you have any feedback for how things went, Hacker Tracker at defcon.org. Send it. Because we can't make it better without feedback. So, so for our numbers, uh, on the respective platforms, we had about 10,000 users hit the website. We had about 5,000 on Android and about 3,000 on iOS. So definitely lower than our normal year, but still a lot of information passed out. So with that, thank you all. We'll see you next year. Okay, speaker operations. Um, do a lot more than just get speakers on stages. They do a lot of uh, behind the scenes coordination like make sure this presentation happens uh, on time. So I'd like to introduce the speaker operations team with PW Crack and who will tell you a little bit of the stories uh, behind making it happen. PW? So our goal is to uh, be as uh, transparent or not uh, invisible as possible. Um, our goal is to make sure that the speakers have a great experience and we deliver as much content as possible to, uh, to the attendees. Um, I'd like to give a, have you all give a big round of applause to all of our speakers uh, for what they produced. So this was the first year that we did a hybrid con. Um, Last year we were able to pre-record about 32 talks. This year we pre-recorded over 70 talks. <laughs> uh, in the past we've also tracked how many minutes or hours we've lost to AV issues. This year you'll note that was zero. So, So that, that takes a lot of effort and I got to give kudos to my entire team for making that happen. Uh, that, that involves planning and preparation and uh, sort of knowing what, what's going to happen and what's coming down the pike. Um, uh, kudos to DCTV. Uh, worked uh, great with them, a great partnership um, getting that content out. Some of the talks were not pre-recorded so those were streamed live from tracks. That was the first time we've done that. Uh, we also supported uh, three parties and meetups uh, and uh, again delivered a lot of content for you so uh, that's for our goal. Thanks a lot. All right, Megan. Tell us about workshops. So um, this is our first year back after taking a year off um, last year. And our first time back in Bali since DEF CON 24 when we had one floor. Um, and I think we only could fit like maybe a thousand students. This year we had both floors in the Jubilee Tower. 1,600 seats, um, actually over 1,600 seats were filled because in some classes you could come in, leave, and more folks could come in. So we kind of lost count around 1,600. We completely sold out in under 24 hours, which is a little bit slower than previous years. And we made sure that uh, all rooms were kept to 80% capacity in order to allow for social distancing. Yep, that's it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I guess I, I could add on that um, workshops have been sort of a secret beta test for us um, for a number of years to see if people are interested in taking four hours out of their con experience to sit down um, and learn something a little bit more in depth. And, and it's been so successful that I'm seriously considering planning, uh, if we have an in-person next year, to try to do paid trainings on Monday and Tuesday after the show. Because everybody else is doing it, why shouldn't we? 
So, <laughs> so if that happens, you might just not ever leave Vegas. Or just <laughs> um, so now we're, we're, we're done with the big content chunks, and now we're going to move into some of the villages. And first up, we're going to talk a little bit about the data duplication village. Hello, DEF CON. So we had a very light year this year, as you might expect. We had about third, uh, a third of the amount of uh, drives submitted for us. Um, we ended up putting 169 drives through the bases, and uh, n nothing against the knock. Thank you for the 6.9 gigabytes out, but we did about a petabyte out. Uh, so we're hoping that a lot of you have go are going home now with your Invocon in your hand and taking it home and sharing it out there. Um, the long and short of it, we only had one drive fail out of all 169, and um, that's pretty much it. We had we had our, our dupes going from seven hours to one took 34 hours to do. So we got them all back to our customers. So we're good to go. Thank you. Okay, for our next slide, is anybody from Arts and Entertainment uh, available to do the representation? Okay, fantastic. We couldn't find Chris, so you are the new Chris. No, you are Chris. <laughs> what has happened? <laughs> Why did they just come up and tell me you weren't available? I'm right here, I've been here. Hey, how's everybody doing? Thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, we had a great time this year. Really good music, really good uh, entertainment. Amazing art that you saw around here. But I really want to thank everybody that came out to the parties, had a great time, enjoyed the music. Uh, this year we had some really, really talented artists here. We had 25 live sets between the inside stage and the pool. And we had Soma give us uh, the chill out stream from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every single day of the con. So, uh, yeah, if you were back here uh, during the day and chill out, you heard them all day long. Uh, let's see here. Uh, don't forget to uh, grab our official DEF CON soundtrack from our Bandcamp site. We have 21 tracks that were submitted this year. It's pay what you want, uh, so you could get it for free, but any money that you do donate will go to the EFF. So some more thank yous. I want to thank everybody in arts and entertainment. Uh, our core team of goons this year was just six on the ground here and two supporting us remotely. Uh, additionally, I'd like to thank Zebler Studios uh, for all of the amazing artwork that you see around the con. Uh, let's see, our team from Mobius who makes everything sound amazing. Uh, Imagine stage lighting. So if you've been at the parties and at the pool, you've seen all the, the crazy lighting. That was Imagine stage lighting. They help us out every year here. Uh, Encore, can't thank them enough. They get us out of uh, sticky situations and help us hang everything, get everything up and power it up. And we couldn't do any of this without DT, Nikita, Janet, and Wendy from the DEF CON office. Really appreciate them. Uh, for some numbers, so for this show, we, uh, this is the first time that we've done a live stream of our performances here on site out to Twitch. Uh, we did uh, 640 gigs of total data transfer uh, from here to Twitch and also from the internet down to us. So because of COVID, all of our SOMA hosts were at home this year and we were streaming them in live into the chill outs. Uh, on our Twitch stream, we had uh, 8,243 total hours of listening time. Uh, we got 4,247 followers and 389 new subscriptions. And those subscriptions resulted and I'm not making this up, $1,337 that we will donate to the EFF. And so you heard about the, uh, some of the network flakiness that we had a little bit earlier, so I want to give a shout out to Cell Phone Dude from Escape. Uh, he's one of the DEF CON vendors in the vendor area. Uh, we were running through one of his LTE routers, so when the network went down, it automatically failed over to, uh, to LTE, and we pushed 30 gigs through LTE to keep everything up and running. And so it's not just this show here. We've been streaming ever since Safe Mode. So uh, since Safe Mode last year, we've been streaming 24-7 for 525,600 minutes. 
Uh, that's 7,773 hours of total watch time, uh, 2,647 followers, 277 subscriptions, and between last year and the start of Con this year, uh, we had $977 to the EFF. Uh, this is our, uh, as uh, CJ talked about earlier, this is our third consecutive year with a ceiling mishap. Uh, so if you were here last year, we brought down a couple ceiling tiles in the year before that as well. So thanks once again for helping us bring down the house at these parties. And on a more serious note, I'd like to address some of the issues that we've had with decor. So you may have noticed those electronic table toppers that were on the tables back in the chill out. Uh, they're really fun to play with. You can bring your own parts and weave them in there and uh, play with the electronics. But this year someone decided to pick the locks on some of those pieces and steal the battery packs out of them. Which means that they're not available for anybody else to play with. And uh, it just takes that experience and fun away from other people. I agree, 100%. And then there was one more thing a little more serious. So uh, this amazing video map sculpture that you see right here. Uh, if you came into this track for the first session this morning, you might have noticed that it was off. And that's because last night somebody snuck in, went behind the stage, broke into our steel cage that has the controller for this thing, messed with the software that controls with it, and then set a full beer down next to the laptop that's running this thing. So, really what I'm trying to say is there's only one wrong way to do DEF CON, and that's to negatively affect the experience of somebody else. So, please have fun. <laughs> Explore everything around you. Pick the locks. We have the locks on the table, but put it back the way you found it. That's the way the next person can have some fun, too. So, while we might be done here in person, uh, we're streaming our music 24-7 on Twitch. Uh, check us out at defconmusic.org. Uh, thanks again and see you all next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm always fascinated by the, the intersection of, of, of technology and music. And, uh, and I really think that one sort of stimulates the creativity of the other. And, uh, so I, I really think, even though you might argue that, well, what, is, what do DJs have to do with hacking, I really think that, that the music inspires us, and, and we have to, just like the art inspires us, right? We're creative people, and it all kind of works together. And, uh, and so I really want to thank Chris for upping the music game over the years. It's been, been really fun. Okay. Not just music, there's also parties. So, let's hear about them. Hello. I'm always a little scared standing up here, so... This crowd is bigger than I thought it would be. This year, uh, we were very light on DEF CON parties and meetups organized by the community. Uh, we had some people that pulled out at the last minute uh, due to COVID, unfortunately. Uh, but I hope that you all had a good time anyway. Uh, we had some parties up on the 26th floor. We had some meetups that were hacking badges and things of that nature. So I wanted to do a huge thank you to the meetup and party organizers for planning a space for people to come together, whether in person, online, or a hybrid approach bridging the divide between the two. Hack a Karaoke had a contest on Discord, and apparently uh, Team Red Cat won Hacker Karaoke. I'm not sure how you win a Hacker Karaoke, but they won, so congratulations to them. <laughs> I want to thank you all for coming out. Stay safe out there. Love you all, and I hope to see you all next year. All right, I would like to introduce Zant for those of you who don't know him. Uh, Long time goon running the village department. Look how many villages there are that he has to, look how much hair he has left still. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. We had again, once again, about just over 30 villages, whether they were in person, hybrided, or online. So hopefully you had a great time enjoying the villages. 
Um, I'd like to give a couple shout outs to Kevin Fox and Honey, who are my seconds that help keep all the hotels running straight for me, so it makes it easier for me to live. Of course, the DT and everybody else. Uh, the only other thing I have to say is, Jeff, this may come as a shock to you. Villages need more space. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody who came and everybody who joined us online. Hope you all enjoyed it. Okay, that was a lot of villages. Here's some contests and events with Grifter. Oh man, what's up, guys? I am I am genuinely stoked to see all of your I assume smiling faces. Um, so yeah, uh, contests and events. We had 44 different contests and events this year. Uh, many of them hosted virtually. Uh, a lot of them dropping out at the last minute, unfortunately, uh, leading to only about 14 contests that were done on site. So um, a lot of stuff being played from home. Um, big thanks to all the organizers who took the time to make it so that people could play in person and could play on Discord as well. Um, we thought that was really cool. Scavenger Hunt, I see Evil walking up over here. Um, Scavenger Hunt actually, for the first time, made it so that only a single player could play on, on any team. Okay, so that this way, and last year, when everybody was at home. Uh, but so that whether you were here in person or you were at home, you were on a le level playing field. So instead of a five-person team coming up on site and being like, okay, let's all split up and do the tasks, um, even if you were here, you had to ride solo so that the guy sitting in his parents' basement in Wyoming somewhere had a fighting chance. Um, so, so the contest, obviously, there's, there's a lot that goes on um, behind the scenes. There's a lot of planning that goes on beforehand. Uh, most of that planning is actually handled by my second, Panadero, who's um, over there. I'm pointing at you, Pan. Just stand up and wave. <laughs> I'm bad at the emails, um, but he's much, much better. But he is uh, stepping down as my second. This was his last year doing that. Um, so many thanks. Uh, yeah, boo for, boo for leaving. No, it's all right. Seriously, he's done so much work. He's earned it. Um, but thanks to Panadero. Um, and then, of course, if you are interested in hosting a contest or running a contest of some kind and you have a weird idea, whether that's from some incredibly complex capture the flag version of whether it's cars or boats or planes or satellites or whatever, or you just want to make tinfoil hats, um, throw us a message. Say, this is what I'm interested in doing. We're always looking for new stuff as long as you're not trying to shill some product. Um, you got a pretty fighting chance. Um, we're going to get to the black badges here momentarily, but first, um, something that people may not realize is that um, the contests and events goons also run the demo labs. So uh, Heisenberg is the one who's in charge of that for us. He goes through all, yes, yay Heisenberg, he's not here, that's why I'm standing up here. Or you'd see, I should have wore his lab coat. Um, so Heisenberg had to take off, so I'm up here to do this. Um, but the demo labs were an idea that we came up with a few years back where we said, we know all of these people are working on interesting projects or they might have something that's like an open source uh, project that they're working on. Why don't we give them a venue to show it to the community? It may not merit an hour on stage, but um, it could be something that people want to just crowd around and take a look at. We know those things go on in hallways, so we just give you a place to do it. Um, there were um, 32 different projects that were received, 21 were accepted, um, 8 in person and 31, or 31, so 13 virtual. Um, so yeah, list exit. Um, but uh, the, the amount of people that flooded those rooms, we know, um, yeah, we'll also be needing some more space. So just putting in that for a more demo lab. Yeah, more space, more space. Um, you're, you're working on that though. I'm pretty sure you're working on it, yeah. Um, so we're going to start out going into the Black Badge winners. Yeah.
All right, I like to start off by, by letting people know, um, again, we had 44 contests, but we only have a handful of black badges that we give out. Um, if you see one of these contests up here and they have a black badge, that doesn't mean that their contest was better than someone else's contest. It doesn't mean that the, that these people put more work than some of the other contests that didn't get a black badge. We randomly, you know, assign them to different contests so that people are playing the contest because whatever is behind it is something that they love. So they're playing for the love of it, not just because they want a chance at getting free entry to DEF CON for life. So you play the contest and on Sunday you'll find out whether or not that contest is getting a black badge. The only one that always gets it is CTF, like the main CTF. And that's because they're working on it all year. Um, so. Um, if your contest also to the organizers, if your contest didn't get one this year and you've got one in the past, that doesn't mean we don't love you anymore. That's just how this rolls. So, um, so our first black badge contest coming up. Uh, these folks put so much work into their contest that some years no one wins. Um, <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, the Tele Challenge. All right, so we work on the Tele Challenge for close to an entire year, and this year nearly 100 people contributed to creating it. Uh, and that resulted in DEF CON really stepping up to play. We had 7,292 calls into our phone system, constituting 167 hours of calls or 10,183 billable minutes. <laughs> The Tele Challenge is a very, very hard challenge. It takes your entire DEF CON to play and you need a team. So three teams gave up before the first day, but seven teams spent their entire DEF CON playing. And ET Pone Phone right here <laughs> brought it home. They scored all 11 points, including the hidden one. So we really want to congratulate these uh, folks who worked very, very hard. One of them is here at their first DEF CON and, and won a black badge. <laughs> and uh, we hope that none of them run into a sandstorm on the way home. What are you doing to me? I just tripped over Jeff's beer. For <laughs> All right, uh, these next folks, um, you know them, you love them, you've seen them year after year. It all started with a wall of sheep and it led to this, capture the packet. Black badge. Hello again, long time no see. <laughs> so this year is actually the 20th year of the Wall of Sheep. 20 freaking years. It's crazy. So uh, Capsule Packet was uh, originally built out as a, a game to allow people to learn how to capture traffic on the network more consistently and have fun and do, do cool things. So um, it's turned into an insane black badge event and this is the 10th time it's been a black badge event, so we got it. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so this year was definitely a Herculean effort. Um, as DT mentioned, it's over double the effort for, you know, this plus half the, t half the staff or around that. Um, it wouldn't be possible without the, the DEF CON teams and staff, um, the Packet Hacking Village group, the Aries team, and then um, the beats that Frecocious and the Was DJ Co put on to keep the life in that village going for all the competitions and things going on there. So thanks to them for sure. So this year was the first time we did a hybrid um, hardware in the loop style event where we had physical hardware on the site 
our on-site here, and then we were doing cloud to allow everybody from around the world to compete and participate. And so we had prelims and mains, both physically and, and virtually. And if somebody qualified in, uh, you know, on the Discord and, and virtually, they can come back next year and jump into the finals. We did finals for physical only. And uh, that worked out really well. It was uh, a bit insane, but um, it, it was awesome. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, I think a good chunk of that came from some of the bots that we put in to auto register and automate the hell out of trying to get people in and play, which worked really, really well. Um, I want to thank Pookie for, for helping make that bot and get that together. That was awesome. So. so this year was two years of pent up insanity and energy uh, from people at home and around the world building content to unleash on these poor bastards. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we had a uh, little over 3,000 points on the board and, and the winning team hit 500. And uh, this guy right here, uh, Respondo, has played six years in a row. And, uh, Every year he's gone for that and hit top three almost every single time. And then, you know, the, one of the teams from uh, out of country would, you know, they're super sneaky. They hold points back. And just when it's in the grasp of the black badge for him, they're like, nope. <laughs> but this year he, he nailed it. And uh, the, the team nailed, nailed it. So give them a hand. And uh, here is the coveted black badge. It's both yours, but there you go. I know you uh, you can share it. <laughs> and then you also uh, are getting some uh, crazy SDRs that uh, I know you guys have been going after. So thank you so much for playing. And bye, everyone. All right, the thing about uh, contests is that, again, you can pretty much turn anything into a contest, and I think this next one uh, takes it uh, to a really interesting level. They brought all of the internals of a yacht. The CTF. Hey, DEF CON, uh, this is uh, the Maritime Hacking CTF. Uh, this is the first time we've actually been a competition in so uh, on site. And uh, we brought this in DEF CON 27 as part of the Hack the Sea Village. We're partnering up with them, uh, trying to bring awareness to maritime cybersecurity challenges. So it's big ships, it's also big problems. So we are excited to be able to bring it here on, on, in person. It was a lot easier than trying to remote everybody in when we did it in 28 virtually. And uh, you know we're really excited and we're hoping to bring it back next year and uh, get even bigger. Maybe we'll show up with an actual ship, just instead of just the <laughs> internals. Hey, need more space. Yeah, it will definitely need more space. <laughs> so I wanted uh, to graduate uh, team uh, uh, Edmund Fitzgerald uh, for this. Uh, um, Uh, so uh, the contest on this is we actually had the, the physical components uh, for the navigation bridge, what you'd find in about a 100-foot yacht um, running on Namiya 2000, uh, the uh, hydraulic steering unit with an actual hydraulics uh, component running on CAN bus, and then a uh, fly-by-wire uh, propulsion system. They were able to take over both the rudder and the throttle and most of the, uh, the spoof the data to the operator at this point. So any of you all that actually operate ships should be a little concerned on that. Um, <laughs> But it was a lot of fun, and I, you know, we also had a lot of people coming up there that had never done maritime thing, right? So most people have never had a chance to hack a ship, so we tried to make this also a training opportunity. And they had never actually touched uh, any maritime equipment before coming to this competition. So, thank you. Yeah, that, like that's the scary thing. It's like if you operate a ship, that should scare you. And then he's like, "By the way, they've never touched the ship before." Like, <laughs> holy shit! Like that's the scary thing. Um, all right, this next group, uh, this contest uh, is getting a black badge their first year um, running a CTF. We don't do that very often. 
Um, but the feedback that we were getting from the people who were playing was intense. Like they were like, this is really good. The challenges are really different. It's being done in a really cool way. We were hearing that in person. We were hearing that virtual. Um, and I went in there and actually got a walkthrough of what everybody had to jump through. And it was impressive as hell. Um, so for the first year contest, getting a black badge this year, it's the Blacks and Cyber CTF. <laughs> His handle is socks. I should have said, like, oh, it knocked our socks off. That's. <laughs> no, not boo. You accept it. Take it. How dare you? Man, this is. Whoa. <laughs> this is pretty unreal. Um, this is crazy. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm Sox. This is Michaela. She's the CEO of Blacks and Cyber Security. So I'll, I'll give you guys cliff notes. Michaela said, hey, Sox, you make CTFs, and we've been doing pretty good at the local level, but I want to spread awareness of, like, black contribution in cyber. Uh, bringing up all sorts of uh, really innovative ways to, to kind of spread how we contribute to the conversation of cyber. And she said, can you, can you create some cool stuff? So I said, hey, I'll try. I reached out. Uh, I, I sat down. I built my own infrastructure, used my own uh, IPv6 or IPv4, I'm sorry, uh, slash 24. And uh, I had two other two other people that worked with me, J.R. Presme, and uh, I got to give a big shout out to uh, to Leo Pitts. Uh, he was the guy that uh, was working alongside with me uh, many countless hours to try and make this thing come alive. So thank you for trusting me with your with your vision. Also, also I'd like to thank DefCon. Because every year that I've come, I've felt very welcome. Everyone's been very accepting. And, and thank you for, for pulling us in. All right, so my first CTF at DEF CON, I was expecting for, for hackers to like grief my servers and destroy them. Because, by the way, I'm kind of a cyber guy. <laughs> um, but I had these great guys who came out and they, they said, hey, let's, let's try this out. It was 40 different teams. Uh, this is representative of maybe um, maybe 112 hours of, of content development and kind of thinking about how to, like, it, it's pretty hard. I had to understand how to properly um, score a challenge versus the complexity that's involved in trying to trying to accomplish it and uh and out of 40 out of 40 teams and those 40 teams were up to four people per team uh p uh pctf or pstf PTFS. ptfs uh ended up coming out on top and they're our black badge winner so uh i want to thank you thank you so much yeah. Thanks so much to Sox for running this. He did a wonderful job for his first CTF here, and we learned quite a lot by playing in it. Thank you. All right. Um, this next group will always um, hold a special place in my heart. 
uh, because I once ran this contest many years ago. Uh, they put an incredible amount of effort to it, much, much more than I did back in the day, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, which is a low, that's a low bar, I guess. Um, but um, but when, you, when you look at what they did this year, it was that they decided they were going to just do it at the same level they've done it every time, except only one of their organizers could be here in person. And so Evil Mofo stepped up, um, set everything up for the contest, ran it all to the point of turning toward the contest goons and just yelling, help! And then we would walk over and he'd be like, I just gotta pee, you gotta watch my stuff. Um, so uh, getting a black badge this year, the scavenger hunt. Awesome. For the archive, this is awesome. I like the next one. Thank you, Beagle. All right. So I had this thing. All right. So, uh, oh, yeah, I should do this so you can actually see. Um, so, I'm Evil Mofo. I'm from Scavenger Hunt. And uh, as he mentioned, we, we did hybrid. Um, I've got, what, three people hanging back at home. The fourth one just bought a house, couldn't do DEF CON at all. Uh, and then we got her. She got, it up. she got recruited to be a goon, and I think I've convinced her to not ever accept that again. <laughs> um, so uh, one thing that's really special about this year, we did a uh, single player team, so it was a level playing field. And so everybody's at home, they have access to everything. And so we have a couple things that were specific only to this Vegas experience. And so that's how we kind of balanced it out. Um, and so with single player teams, what ended up happening is the four, the top four players are all identified as female. So, yeah, so fourth place was Honey. Third place was Senior Arena. Thank you. Senior I may have been drinking. <laughs> Senorita Fancy Bottom, who uh, is also also known as Nikita. Yeah. So, so uh, not not only does she help make all this awesome, she somehow still found the time to submit some of the highest quality uh, submissions that we had this year. Um. I don't know if they've played that video yet or it's coming, but there's a submission that at some point should be played tonight, apparently. Um, and that's from her doing, I think, five or six items at once. <laughs> uh, and then second... Yeah, yeah. Uh, second place was Jether's Random Stuff, who was playing online on Discord. And first place was Fiore... Who made this glorious Moby Duck. Moby Duck? The glorious Moby Duck that DT has was made by Fiore here. And so here is your black badge. Also, worth mentioning, uh, she didn't even start the scavenger hunt until the second day. Yeah. Um, and she had to sell her on. And, and also, this is her clippy costume she was wearing. Uh, and so, Scavenger Hunt is the best way to experience DEF CON. You should come find us at DEF CON 30 and come play. I'll, I'll share a, a really quick story about um, the scavenger hunt had, they were streaming in their, their remote organizers as well. You could see them up on the screen and you could actually talk to them on a phone that was on the table. Well, last night before Jason Street and I battled as dinosaurs do, um, we needed somewhere to change. So we went into the contest area and I'm in there like getting on a suit and doing whatever and I go, I'm leaving the contest area and I walk past the scavenger hunt table and a phone starts ringing. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you have to answer it, right? And I just pick it up and it's Dual D from wherever he is and he's like, I fucking love you. 
And I was like, what? And he's like, look to your right. And I look, and there's the camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> scavenger hunt, always watching, always judging. All right, uh, this next contest um, is the reason most of us are thinking about buying like a 68 VW bug and just calling it a day, the car hacking CTF. <laughs> Pass the baby. Pass the baby. All right. You did it! All right. Here you go. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, thanks for everybody for showing up. Obviously, this year we were um, also a hybrid, but we're car hacking, so we were intended to be hybrid. Obviously, everybody knows this. Oh, too soon. Okay. I got you. No. You yes. take it, yeah! Dad jokes! Dad jokes. jokes! All right, that's all I got. So some stats. Um, so we have some stats. We had one tiny car heist. <laughs> one borrowed license plate. If you have borrowed it, if you could return our license plate, that would be great. We did have 11 talks. Uh, so thank you for our speakers. We do appreciate that. Go talks. Um, we did also had lots of badges as well um, and a ton of CTF teams. We actually did two CTFs this year. We did one main CTF, which had very few challenges and were really difficult, and one virtual one. Um, so we were able to you know, include everybody uh, virtually as well. Um, uh, and we also had one amazing goon, village goon, Kevin. Thank you very much. You were the man. Thank you. You were awesome. Thank you. Um, we also had lots of chopsticks as well. So if you have chopsticks, your uh, thanks to Kevin as well. Um, and um, our, our our main uh, the CTF winner uh, for the main CTF was unable to make it. So on behalf of the, our main CTF winner, we have um, Lintal lookalikes um, and uh, thank you to Matt Damon for accepting this. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Grifter. Thank you, da uh, DT. Thank you, Nikita. You rock. Uh, Matt Damon over there. Thank you. Matt Damon. All right. I think uh, this one's actually pretty nice because we get to see them come up on stage and, and talk for a minute. But that thing that's hanging around your neck isn't just a game of Simon. It's also a challenge. So next up, the badge challenge. All right. So for those of you who got a chance to play the challenge, there were a lot of you, hundreds, and I hope you all you. had fun. And I heard a lot of people hate Jenny. I, <laughs> so I apologize. It was not meant to be that difficult. <laughs> so um, our winning team was Elephant Gambit. Um, these guys. Yeah, well done. So they, uh, I guess, have played some of the badge challenges in the past and gotten close. This year they came prepared. They got a hold of someone who sent out a vir got a virtual badge, you know, a couple weeks ago, got the firmware, decompiled it, figured out what pins were connected to what, just from that. <laughs> they had things traced out and ready to go. So when they got on site and got a real badge, they got through things really quick. They were 19 hours faster than the next team. It was <laughs> super impressive. So, well done, guys. Um, so, okay, so um, part of the challenge was connecting to lots of other people. Once you connected to a certain, uh, all the badge types, right, then you collected the signal and then you had to share it with a bunch of other people. Once you had done that, you got a new URL, went to a website. There were um, lots of challenges involving hacking on the badge itself, cutting traces uh, to get different parts of it. Uh, lots of logic puzzles and weird puzzles to, <laughs> to get through. 
And in the end, uh, an Attendorf cipher, I think it was 73, Three? 73 characters they had to find through the old DEF CON programs. It was Every brutal. Every single DEF CON program. <laughs> Counting words, paragraphs, sentences, lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Take it. So, these guys did great. Uh, and last but certainly never least, um, the contest that is played all year round leading up to the main event here at DEF CON, qualifier after qualifier, and what I can only assume is an excessive amount of Adderall. Um, <laughs> capture the flag. Hello, hackers. I am uh, Zardas, and we are the Order of the Overflow, and we organize DEF CON CTF. Uh, before I get started, we have a lot of people to thank, uh, and it starts with DT, and it goes uh, all the way through all the goons, everyone involved in making this possible. Uh, we do uh, our, our share of work, but uh, the amount of work that all of these people do is insane. So let's give them a quick hand. I'm running on uh, something like three hours of sleep this weekend. Uh, hey, hey, he took a nap under the table, all right? Yeah, the one hour of sleep last night was under the, the table in our organizing room. Um, I was so cold, I dreamt that uh, the goons had robbed us of our uh, challenge coins and imprisoned me in a block of ice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, any goons that didn't get challenge coins from us in that uh, dream encounter, we have some for you. So go find us. Um, anyways, uh, DEF CON... CTF is uh, a hell of an event. Um, and like another event that ended or will end today, uh, the goal of DEF CON CTF is to identify the best, the most skilled, maybe, maybe they're not so good, but they're very skilled, <laughs> hackers on the planet. What Dark Tangent wants to do with those hackers, I don't know. But uh, we'll, I, we'll be fine for them. <laughs> All right, uh, Order of the Overflow started hosting CTF, uh, DEF CON CTF back in DEF CON 26. Uh, we had a uh, rambunctious first year when we realized uh, just how much work this insanity is. Uh, second year, DEF CON 27, um, we had a, a whole lot of really crazy challenges. We uh, got Xboxes for all the teams, and they hacked each other through the game network. It was uh, quite, quite wild. Uh, of course, DEF CON 28 was virtual. Um, we had an insane system where we invented the 16-hour day to uh, fairly accommodate uh, all the teams playing widely around the world. Uh, and this year, DEF CON 29, we ran a hybrid competition uh, with about half of our teams remote, half of them here in Las Vegas, but everybody able to hack and uh, pwn each other. Um, this year marks the end of our tenure as the organizers of DEF CON CTF. Uh, and personally, from me and from everyone on our team, I would like to extend a thanks to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Grifters is right. This, um, this is a event that, that is played all year. It's also an event that is organized uh, all year. It's uh, an enormous amount of work and uh, we do it and we're proud to do it because we love the community and we want to uh, continue to push it forward. We want to challenge hackers. We want to provide uh, open infrastructure, open challenges, uh, inspiration, 
documentation uh, and uh, a path forward for people to get into this awesome hobby. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I will uh, real quick thank my team for their uh, sacrifices and dedication over the last four years. Um, with us here today, we have Adam D. He's basically uh, my CTF spouse. <laughs> Don't show your actual wife that man. Brooke is going to be really upset to hear that, but... Uh... Yeah, um, they have a whole like time sharing agreement on me. Anyways, um, we have Eric Trickle, we have M Matt, known as M7, we have Pepper S, we have Sunnyvale, we have Jeff Crowell, we have Jay Karina, and we have Mike Pizza, aka, should I tell them you're aka? No, Mike Pizza. All right. And remotely, I have to thank uh, those of us who aren't here, who can't make it, uh, who are stuck in countries that uh, aren't as lucky as we are, uh, or just uh, cannot travel here for other reasons. Um, we have Odo, uh, Null Pointer, Balzerot, Ray Yammer, Captain, Bebo, Aimbot, Slipper, Tiffany B, Antonoob, Hakapo, and that's it. So that was a lot of names. Um, that's because this is a lot of work. Um, and we are retiring and a new group has to come in. So think about what you can do for the hackers. Uh, we are here to help and we'd love to make the next transition super, uh, super smooth. All right. With that said, let's talk about this year. Um, teams try to get into DEF CON CTF year around. Usually there is a number of pre-qualifying events, other uh, Olympic level events around the world, the winners of whom are invited to DEF CON. Uh, this year we had the previous uh, winners of DEF CON CTF, AOE, who uh, are now known as Katsebin. Um, the winners of HitCon CTF, HXP, uh, CCC CTF, Glad CTF, and Pwn to Win, all invited to compete at DEF CON CTF. We also ran our own qualifiers. Uh, the top N teams, to make a total of 16, were invited to attend this year as well. Our own qualifiers included all sorts of crazy challenges uh, and involved people from all around the world. And actually all of this, uh, well not necessarily the exact uh, IP tag data, but the, the um, packet captures, uh, all of the challenges, et cetera, are available on our website. Um, in the end, we ended up with uh, 16 teams. Uh, this is them in alphabetical order and it's a little hard to see uh, the uh, kind of font color, but we have about four teams for whom this is their first DEF CON CTF. So welcome. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, we had two teams that have been competing for over 10 years. It's quite a lot of time. So it's the two teams. Uh, one is the Platt Parliament of Poning, competing for 11 years. Uh, and the other is uh, Shellfish, competing for a staggering 17 years. Shellfish, the amount of competition Shellfish has been in, they're almost old enough to vote. <laughs> but let's give these uh, legends a hand. All right. So 
what did these teams do? These teams worked on a large variety of challenges. Um, of course, binary exploitation, binary reverse engineering, uh, always a mainstay at these sort of competitions. Uh, we threw at them a lot of different things, overlooked computer architectures, for example, architectures that aren't often thought about but that run our lives. The microcode engine in your network cards that offloads stuff like IP checksum calculations and some uh, encryption and so on, right? Things like that are uh, not often explored in security. We brought them in, we had the teams suffer and uh, uh, push themselves to exhaustion um, to do this. I say to exhaustion, uh, we didn't have any incidents this year, but uh, our first year we had an uh, unfortunate incident where a CTF player played themselves into unconsciousness and fell out of their chair and like uh, had to be, you know, sat up and That's forced. Cool. Yeah, that, that was uh, pretty intense. They're okay, um, they're okay now, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, this year we explored a series of um, uh, challenges in which we built a virtualized network stack uh, or like a, a virtualized compute stack like AWS called OOOWS, end-to-end, -end, hypervisor, virtual devices, the entire interface, everything. Uh, we might launch it as a business venture when we retire. Um, Maybe we'll go to space. Yeah, we could go to space. That's great. Oh, in space. Anyways, it was uh, not something you'd want to run anything critical on, uh, in part because of intentional bugs, and in other part because of unintentional bugs. Um, we had an entire uh, vulnerable network from like the early 2000s. We had a Windows 2000 box, et cetera, et cetera, as a whole separate challenge um, of, of these, like how crazy can a network get before people just can't even uh, deal with it anymore. Uh, and a whole bunch of other crazy challenges for the teams, one of which was a video game inspired by the game Baba Is You, which is a great game, highly recommended. Uh, we had Zero Is You, a shell coding game that we will release uh, on our website for free, obviously, because I don't know why anyone would uh, pay us for anything. <laughs> but um, for your enjoyment, if you are interested in learning about shell code, this is a great way. Um, we uh, ran an enormous amount of traffic through the network. You can't see this, but basically uh, during the competition, we averaged like 40 megabits. Uh, I can't see it either. Uh, probably more, more like 20 megabits a second um, of like pure attack traffic. It was insane. Uh, like tens of thousands of requests every minute. Wild, wild west uh, for real. Um, this is, oh, this is the requests per second, uh, spiking up to 200 um, for some uh, very eager hackers. They got blocked. They, they got temporarily blocked. <laughs> Told to slow their roll a little bit. Um, all right. If you're interested in this, we archive most of our challenges, the ones that, that we can archive, some of our challenges, like I mentioned Xboxes and stuff, have physical components. Uh, we archive most of our challenges at archive.oo. They are available uh, starting uh, tomorrow and, and throughout the week. We'll be adding challenges from this year's competition. If you are interested, go tackle the challenges, try your skills. This uh, hobby is super approachable at crazy high levels, so go do it. Archive that o o o. All right, let's talk about ranking. So, we'll start with the uh, places 6 to 16 in DEF CON CTF. And I want to stress that, yes, there is a team that got 16th place, but uh, there's someone that got last place at the Olympics, but they were still at the Olympics, throwing axes or whatever, you know? Um, what so are you watching? What Olympics have you been watching? The, yeah, the, you know, the, the guy stands and... Anyways, um, so these are Olympic level hackers come across the world, come from across the world to show their skills um, and a uh, number, let's go from 16th, we have Pasten, Rika Pig, Shellfish, Macaroni, Norse Code, Dice Gang, OO Organizers, no relation, uh, Samurai, 
Uh, PTB WTL, that's Pwn Thy Bites Wreck the Line, Game Null, and Perfect Guesser. So great job, let's give these a hand, move on. All right, let's uh, start going up the list. So fifth place in DEF CON CTF, hailing from Taiwan, it's Hitcon Balsen. I never know how to pronounce uh, the sword emoji, so I'll just skip it. All right, uh, great job. Uh, in number four from Korea and a bit around the world, Starbucks. All right, so uh, Starbucks was actually an in-person team, so hopefully if you're out there, raise your hand, wave. Yeah. Great job. Uh, I'll shout out a special mention to Starbucks. They know virtualization quite well. I'm insanely impressed. All right. Um, in third place at DEF CON CTF from China, Tea Deliverers. Great job. All right. And everyone wants to know who's second and first. Let's see if this works. And it didn't. <laughs> All right. There was an epic battle for second and first. Uh, all the top teams actually participated at one point uh, with their virtualization mastery. Starbucks shot out so far ahead, I thought it would be impossible for anyone to catch up. But people caught up, as you saw. Um, and there was this war of attrition, exploit after exploit, uh, stealth attacks, uh, strategic disclosure of vulnerabilities through network traffic, uncareful network traffic that intentionally pointed other teams toward various directions. It was wild. Um, and in the end, the rankings stabilized. In second place at DEF CON CTF, hailing from the United States, the Plaid Parliament of Poning. Let's give them a hand. Amazing job. And the winners of DEF CON, uh, there's a typo on the slide, DEF CON 29 CTF from China, Katsubin. They, they did also win DEF CON 28 CTF, so the slide isn't, uh, isn't inaccurate. So two years in a row, great job. Uh, usually we have them all walk through, but uh, the top three teams were all remote, um, which, you know, it maybe has something to do with uh, being able to sleep in their own beds and <laughs> eat their own food and all of this stuff. Um, yeah, exactly. That's overrated. <laughs> DEF CON forever. All right. On that note, thank you very much. O O O out. Yeah, squeak, squeak. Okay. So we alluded to the, the, the reign of the OOO. Four years is over and we'll be opening up a call for CTF organizers next month once we've all slept. And then we'll take the uh, last call for organizers, update it with lessons learned. And as uh, Zardas mentioned, um, OOO is really interested in making sure there's a smooth transition. So they're perfectly happy to help provide feedback, help whoever is selected, um, really make their first year a successful year. And I, I really like that. That's a, that sort of that spirit uh, of continuity and really helping up the next group. Um, that's really cool. So if you know of anybody who wants to sleep under tables and not sleep, 
for a year and organize a CTF, just tell them to start resting up now and, uh, and get ready to, to submit. So we mentioned this a little bit earlier. There's a lot of departments that make DEF CON uh, possible, whether they're virtual or remote. Here's a list of all of them. There's also groups outside of this that might be considered like contractors, right? The people we use um, coastwide promotions to print a lot of our shirts and our swag, or network providers, our colo provider. Um, and so it's just, it's a huge army of people all for three, four days. And it's, you don't think of that so much. You think it's a very kind of point in time. But that saying that the show must go on is totally legit, right? It all ha can't happen tomorrow. It's got to happen today. Um, and that type of thinking um, and, and these kind of uh, teams that we've built really make it happen for you. So I just want to give a big round of applause for all the teams, everybody that's made it happen. Now something we do um, is just like contestants who demonstrate an insane amount of skill earn a black badge, um, for goons we have what we call a gold badge. And gold badges are for goons that have uh, served DEF CON in the community for ten or more years. And then they say, hey, you know what, I can't put in the time, I'd like to retire or take some time off. We give them the gold badge to recognize all their service and just like a black badge they can come whenever they want for free and just hang out and kind of um, enjoy it from the other side. <laughs> so we have some retiring goons this year uh, that have been with us for ten or more years. Um, Forkus, I cannot pronounce you, Squeak, David M, Heather B and Nicole T and I think, was it, was it Forkus that had? Twenty-three years. For Forcus. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of institutional memory, and uh, and so then we also have our current number of gold badge holders, and then we always have the constant renewal. We have uh, noons, which are considered new goons. So every year we'll try out some noons, and then if we don't scare them away or they're interested, they just start becoming the next generation of goons. And so it's a really nice like cycle of life. <laughs> cycle of goon. Um, and then we mentioned a little bit earlier, a couple of people were thanking um, myself and, and others, but really what happens is we have year round we have what we call the headquarters, DEF CON HQ. And basically we're just like the core staff, the, the sort of administrative back end staff keep the servers running, um, run this, uh, the call for papers, coordinate, um, you know, all the paperwork. And so this is, these are the people that sort of 24-7 are on the DEF CON payroll making sure that, that everything is ready to go when the show happens. Um, so thank you. Some of them have stayed at home to deal with um, c fiber cuts, you know, when uh, somebody took a sawzall through the DEF CON network. In the olden days, um, if that had happened while we were on site, there would have been nobody in at back home. It was all hands on deck. But as we've grown, we've been able to have someone whose job is to make sure the networks and the bots and the discord is working and that has been really fantastic, especially in this hybrid year. Um, so thank you to everybody from HQ that was able to be here or staying back home to take care of problems. Thank you. All right. So all, all year long we've got DEF CON online. Um, just to remind you a couple of things, right? Line con for life. <laughs> um, hackers love Discord, right? It's, it's been doing better than we thought. And we've got a line con there for your line con pleasure. Um, what we started last year after safe mode, uh, DEF CON movie night, where, yeah, who, who here has done a movie night? Just show of hands, who's on movie night? Okay, is, is uh, Slee Stack in the room? Yeah. Slee Stack, where are you? Slee Stack, Slee Stack. Slee Stack is the person who runs uh, movie night. And uh, he used to be a movie critic. And uh, I think, I'm not sure if he still blogs on movie reviews, but he really enjoys the craft of movies. And he actually just, with a lot of care, he selects your movie entertainment. And, 
and runs Discord every week for you. And what we're trying to do is just capture a chill moment where we can connect remotely. And it's done so well. Um, I think we'll continue it yeah. for the. And uh, something we'd love to do, you notice we had some hacker documentaries that we played and we'd try to get the producers or the directors or some of the people. So we're really trying to find those opportunities. If you know of a movie that's got a solid hacker connection and you know some of the people involved, we'd love to have some of the people uh, involved in creating the movie also be available for sort of like a community chat. As uh, Chris mentioned, we have A&E music streaming all year. We've got everything going on YouTube. And over the next month, um, as we get all the videos that were live at the show or from other villages, we'll be combining them and we'll be releasing torrent files. And then at some point we'll announce like, okay, we've got everything we can find. Um, and then that will be sort of like that year's final torrent. And we are now on the countdown to DEF CON 30. <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30. So you'll notice the, the date's really late. And it's the latest, or I think it's almost the latest we've ever done a show. And that's because we have to coordinate um, our dates back to back with Black Hat. <laughs> and, um, and because of the, the new Caesars uh, forums and the way they are at Mandalay Bay and all of that, this is the latest we'll be. The year after this, DEF CON 31 will be much earlier. So if we can survive next year's late dates, then we'll come back into a more traditional kind of end of July um, thing. So we're going to be at where we thought we would be two years ago, the Caesars Forum. Now the good thing is we spent about three months, four months planning how to use the forums and then threw all that planning uh, away because of safe mode. So now we've gone back, we've got it, and we feel like, hey, we're three months ahead. <laughs> We already planned for all of this. Now that we know what we know, we'll go back and, and we'll, we'll readjust. But, um, but we're going back to a place that we kind of already checked out. So if you're here in town um, or you're passing through Vegas uh, and you want to check it out, the, the bridge now connected between the Flamingo and everything, apparently it's been totally enclosed and air conditioned and it's like walking through a tunnel. You don't know you're uh, above the street. And, uh, and we're really looking forward to going there, new infrastructure. But, of course, we're going to be too big for it. Uh, and so, more space. <laughs> so, so we've got the Flamingo, we mentioned it, right? Paris, Bally's, Link, Harris, and Flamingo. Um, and so hopefully with all of that new space, we also have, which not mentioned, to the right hand side, if you're looking from the sky of the Caesars Forum, there's like 200,000 square feet or so of like this giant outdoor concrete pad. So if you wanted to bring in a helicopter or a boat, <laughs> yeah, or, or kegs of beer. But there's a lot of space and so we're trying to figure out what to do with that also. So we have some new opportunities and also there, there actually is a pool on the roof. And so a roller rink. So we will have um, a, our own pool. And, and that's something we didn't mention earlier and I want to see a show of hands. Who went to the pool parties and thought they were awesome? Yeah. We, we haven't had a, our own pool for a while and it really was reminiscent a little bit of the old AP days. So, pool two. Pool, no pool two. No. No. No pool two. Yes. Um, so here's just a little bit of the information of what the, the new space will look like. And then finally, post content. All coming soon. We've got our soundtrack. We'll get some badge write-ups from some of the badge creators on the DEF CON forums where we're trying to capture all the badge information we can. And that is it. It's time to end transmission. Thank you all.